Do chemtrails actually contain viruses intentionally added by the government to control the population? Is there truth in this conspiracy? Not really, at least until proven otherwise. But first, we need to understand from a scientific standpoint what chemtrails actually are. Let's start with the name. What we are discussing are not actually chemtrails, but contrails. Let me explain. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Airplanes use kerosene to operate. When kerosene is burned, it produces carbon dioxide, water vapor and small quantities of carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and particulate matter. To simplify, let's say water vapor, CO2 and some pollutants, similar to those emitted by our cars, we could say that airplanes are like massive cars in the sky and as such they pollute just like most of the means of transportations we use every day. This has nothing to do with bacteria, red blood cells, or even vaccines that some believe are added to the traces by powerful and sinister groups. No evidence whatsoever. When it comes to heavy metal, however, the situation is slightly different since they actually are present in trace amount as they are part of the aircraft's emissions. Obviously, they are not good for the environment, nor for our health. We can all agree on this, but the same can be said for all the combustion vehicles we use every day. Okay, let's recap. Chemtrails are not actually chemtrails, but condensation trails, which are mainly composed of condensed water vapor, but also pollutants, just like our cars. At this point, you may wonder, if contrails are almost entirely made of condensed water vapor, why do they linger in the sky for so long? Why don't they dissolve right away? To comprehend this phenomenon, let's look at clouds. After all, once the pollutants have been removed, contrails have the same composition as clouds. As a matter of fact, they are formed in exactly the same way. They both form when a mass of warm, humid air collides with cold, dry air. When these two masses collide, the humidity in the warmer mass condenses, changing from gas to liquid and creating all these tiny droplets that eventually combine to create clouds. The same thing happens in condensation trails. The aircraft's engines ejects hot and humid air that, when meeting the cold air at high altitudes, creates those familiar trails that are, in fact, man-made clouds. Speaking of clouds, this also explains why contrails are white. That's because they are indeed clouds. Do you know what is not normal? The grey or black cloud coming out of your car. If that is the case, I strongly suggest calling a mechanic because there's probably something wrong with your car. Now, why don't clouds, and by extension contrails, dissolve instantly if they are indeed made of condensed water vapor? Because to do so, clouds and contrails would have to go back from one state to another, in this case from liquid droplets to vapor. For it to be possible, we need specific pressure, temperature and humidity conditions. And it could take minutes, tens of minutes, or even hours for these conditions to change. That's why we can see the same clouds or the same contrails in the sky for an entire day. Here is another common question. Why don't cars leave condensation trails? They also produce water vapor. As mentioned earlier, the transition from gas to liquid, which is called condensation, happens only under specific conditions. Obviously not the same conditions we have at ground level. To start, airplanes are larger than cars and as such consume more fuel and release more water vapor, making it easier for contrails to form. This statement is true. What about altitude? The conditions are not always the same, that's why airplanes sometimes pass by without leaving any trail. So no, a flying aircraft doesn't always leave a contrail behind. Okay, we have seen some of the most important aspects of chemtrails. There is only one question left, one that we hear often, which is, can contrail affect the climate? Clouds do contribute to the natural greenhouse effect, the good greenhouse effect. If Earth has the optimal temperature to support life, it's also thanks to clouds. However, condensation trails are man-made clouds that add to natural forming ones, and their addition can worsen the greenhouse effect. So yes, it is partially true that contrails have an impact on the climate, 
The aviation sector, just like the transportation sector in general, is a major contributor in terms of emissions and pollution. However, this has nothing to do with the idea of deliberately adding substances to the atmosphere to willingly impact the climate. Uh, it's a negative aspect we're working on. In conclusion, chemtrails are not chemtrails, but condensation trails, and are mostly made of condensed water vapor. They contain pollutants that are indeed harmful to the environment, but no trace of bacteria, viruses, or other deliberately added dangerous substances. They do contain climate-altering substances that could impact the climate, or worsen the greenhouse effect. Finally, the fact that they could remain visible in the sky for a variable amount of time depends on the weather conditions and not on some sinister agenda. This is all, at least until proven wrong. Thank you for following us, we'll see you on the next video here on Geopop Science in Everyday Life.